Welcome to today's talk, Tuesday the 25th of May. Fairly brief update today. I just wanted to do an update on the possible complication of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, which is myocarditis. Now, it's very rare, but there's a few things I think we can take into account to minimise the risk. The first one is that um, we may need to make sure this is given in a, as an intramuscular injection, not as an intravascular injection. That, that's my view. I'm going to talk about that. Um, I'm just wondering if young men particularly young men under about the age of 30, should be offered uh, an adenovirus vector vaccine, such as AstraZeneca or Janssen, instead of the Pfizer or Moderna. The Pfizer or Moderna, of course, are the messenger RNA vaccines. Not something I'm recommending. I'd just like the authorities to think about this. And I also think there's a real issue here that people should be advised not to exercise for a few days after they receive their vaccination, which, as far as I know, is not being done. Because if someone does have inflammation of the heart muscle and they exercise, it's more likely that they could have a dangerous, what we call a dysrhythmia, or some people call it an arrhythmia, where the heart goes into an abnormal rhythm. So let's look, let's look at this uh, condition now. So um, we're dealing with uh, myocarditis. Now, this is an acute inflammatory condition. Most commonly, it's actually caused by viral infections, such as a Coxsackie virus. But it can be toxicity, such as cocaine or alcohol or carbon monoxide or lithium can cause this as well. But it can also be autoimmune. And it can sometimes occur in a condition called systemic lupus erythematosus or lupus. And also sometimes in a condition called rheumatoid arthritis. So it can be immunological. This is, this is known. Now, in the medical textbooks, it normally says that um, myocarditis will occur typically several weeks after a viral infection. But after the vaccine, it seems to be several days. So there does seem to be a difference there. So um, now this was first flagged as a possible risk in uh, Israel. Five million vaccines, 62 cases. And we did notice at the time that this like level of um, abnormal, uh, unusual a complication was was actually slightly greater than people were getting from the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine in terms of the uh, thrombosis, thrombocytopenia, blood clot. So um, I think this kind of balances out the vaccines really, and and, and it's a, it, it's it indicates that we might possibly change to uh, advise people to take a particular vaccine depending on their gender as well as their age, which is being done now. So would it be a good idea for younger men to be offered the Oxford AstraZeneca or the uh, Janssen vaccine? And it would, would it be a better idea, as is happening now, for young women to be offered the Pfizer or Moderna? That's kind of where we're going with this. Because in, in Israel, it was mostly young men. Now, the Centers for Disease Control report, we did look at this the other day. And um, it was a bit, well, when I say weak on numbers, I don't think it had any numbers at all. Uh, predominantly in adolescents and young men, more often in males than females, more often following the second dose and the first dose, typically within four days after vaccination, uh, which we looked at a few days ago. But very light on numbers. Uh, they did say there's relatively few reports of myocarditis and mostly after the second dose. Now, there has been one or two cases where people have uh, reportedly had this after the first dose, but they'd previously had the infection. That seems to be the, the difference. Now, um, this is, this is uh, Benjamin Hayes, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Uh, reported cases appear to be mild and often go away without requiring treatment, which, of course, is excellent. Is excellent. But... I don't know about you, but I, I used to do a bit of a sort of half marathon and marathon running. And um, quite a few of the events I was in, someone actually died during the run. Now, we don't know what was wrong with all of those. Some of them might have had a congenital defect in the heart. That's quite possible. Others might have had predisposition to a particular uh, dysrhythmia, an abnormal rhythm of the heart. But others may have had myocarditis at the time of the run. That's possible. So they could have had a viral infection a couple of weeks before. They, they had uh, myocarditis at the time of the run. It was all right before the run, but the increased exercise sent them off into an abnormal rhythm and a potential rhythm called ventricular fibrillation. So, yes, it's mild, according to Benjamin Hayes. Yes, it's uh, usually self-limiting. 
But my question is, is it dangerous to exercise in the first few days after the vaccine? And that doesn't seem to have been addressed. My natural reserve would, would advise people against training, sports, uh, things like that in the first few days after the vaccine. So my question to the authorities is, would you think about that and see if that's worth uh, advising? Um, rare given the number of vaccines and doses administered. Yes, we agree with that. This is not an anti-vaccine message by any means. Uh, several dozen cases in the United States. Now, this is the first time we've had a number. Now, I don't think this comes from Benjamin Hayes. So let me try and get this right. Here. I think that's a separate issue. The several dozen cases actually comes from a report in the uh, in the Washington Post. And it seems to be someone who was speaking um, off the record. Now, that means it might not be accurate, of course, but we think it may well be. So several dozen cases, does that mean 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 84? What does that mean? We don't know. Um, adolescents and young adults seem to be mostly affected. So this is younger people, particularly younger men, um, being potentially affected by this myocarditis, the inflammation of the middle, the muscle layer of the heart. So most of the cases were males, usually after the second dose of the Pfizer, BioNTech or the Moderna. So this is the messenger ribonucleic acid vaccines where this complication is being suggested as a, as a possible complication. It's still not completely admitted to yet, but it does. it is looking like it from the way that they are writing here. In fact, the way they're writing here, um, what's the exact wording? Read it for yourself, but um, there are relatively few reports that they're kind of debating it, but consistent. The, the reason I'm mentioning is it's consistent with the Israeli data and consistent with some European data. So it looks like there is something here and it would just be so easy to advise people not to exercise after the injection for a few days. Um, President of the American um, Heart Association, Michael Elkind, um, most of the time myocarditis is a transient condition that people recover from without any long-term problems, most of the time. But as we say, very important not to exercise or take certain drugs like steroids in that particular time period. Now, we do know that myocarditis, inflammation of the heart muscle, and pericarditis, so the pericardium is the, uh, the tough fibrous layer and serous layer. Um, so there's a serous layer inside that lubricates the heart and there's a tough fibrous layer around the outside. So peri perimeter goes around the outside of the heart. Uh, the pericardial sac it's sometimes referred to. Now, so inflammation of the pericardium and inflammation of the myocardium are known complications of several viral infections, quite a few viral infections. And uh, here is the American... College of Cardiology that reports uh, COVID-19 as a possible cause of myocarditis and pericarditis. So this can occur anyway. So it's not too surprising that it could potentially occur after the vaccine. It's not, it's not a ludicrous thing. Um, statement of the American Heart Association, uh, American Heart Association stroke American Stroke Association. So the American Heart Association, the Stroke Association. Here's their statement here. Now that is this one. Um, this is their press release. And um, it's pretty uh, unambiguous, really. Um, we have the authority of the people saying it there. We strongly urge all adults and children uh, 12 years and older in the United States to receive a COVID vaccine as soon as they can receive it. Uh, as recently approved by the US Food and Drug Administration and the CDC, the evidence continues to indicate that the COVID-19 vaccines are nearly 100% effective at improve, uh, preventing death and hospitalisation due to COVID-19 infection. So um, read that there. So there's, there's no question that this is still... Um, here it says, we, we remain confident that the benefits of vaccination far exceed the very small, rare risks... The risks of vaccination are also far smaller than the risks of COVID-19 infection itself, including its potentially fatal consequence, uh, consequences and the potential long-term health effects that are still uh, revealing themselves, including 
uh, myocarditis. So anyway, re read that for yourself. So th there's no question that um, all of the official bodies, at least in the States here, and of course in, in my country as well, are coming out in favour of vaccination. Um, but some things to know about, just to make this a bit safer. So I've asked those questions. I think those questions merit an answer. Um, so th this is a direct quote from the... Uh, now, this is from this is from here, which is the, the release of the... Um, the American Heart Association here. No, this is the this is the uh, statement from the yeah the American Heart Association and the American Stroke Association seems to be combined. Um, so this is their release here. Now these are the clinical features that they talk about. So let's just look at those in a little more detail so we know what to look out for. Because if we know what to look out for, if any of these occur, people can seek medical attention straight away and not exercise until they get medical attention. In fact, I think it's probably best to advise people not to exercise for the first few days anyway after vaccine. But that's a question for the authorities that I think I would like them to answer. We also encourage everyone to keep in touch with their primary care professionals and seek care immediately if they have any of these symptoms in the weeks after receiving COVID-19 vaccination. Now, they're saying weeks here. So what does that mean? Does it mean two weeks? Does it mean three weeks? Does it mean four weeks? Does it mean five weeks? See, what I mean, it's a bit frustrating. It's a bit nonspecific, isn't it? Anyway, that's direct quote. That's what they've said. That's all we've got. Although we know most cases seem to occur in the first four days, they're saying in the weeks after. Uh, the, the other source here said typically within four days after the vaccine. That is not a direct quote from their side. Uh, I put that in from other data. That has been suggested. Right. Now, the first one they've got here is chest pain, including sharp, sudden stabbing pains in the chest. So that's probably the most important one. The chest pain is probably the most important one, um, including sharp. The sharp stab, stabbing pains tend to be the pericarditis, but any chest pain, um, of course, is, is, well, any chest pain anytime merits a medical opinion, but now especially. Now, they put down some other features here, but I would actually, and this is, this is me talking, not, 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 not the... Um, not the uh, American Heart Association. I would have thought the second thing to look out for is uh, an inappropriate fast heart rate, a tachycardia. So like if you go up the stairs normally and you uh, don't even notice it, but then you go up the stairs one day and you can feel your heart pumping and your heart beating, then that's not normal, is it? Your heart's having to work too hard. It's an inappropriate tachycardia. Or if you feel your heart kind of beating in your chest irregularly, that can be a sign that you have a dysrhythmia. So I, I personally would have put that next to inappropriate uh, fast heart rate or, or feeling heart palpitations. But, um, well, you could argue about the order. Anyway, that's the one they put first. So but, but, but back to what we know, not, not my opinions, back to the American Heart Association. Uh, difficulty breathing, of course, um, that, that's clearly a problem with the circulation. Abnormal heartbeat, so they do put that in there. That's fine. Okay, so they have said that. So presumably that includes irregular and a tachycardia. Which is a fast heart rate. Uh, severe headache. Not quite sure how, how that's related to the heart. Could be to do with circulation to the brain. That could be to do with circulation to the brain. That could do with circulation to the brain. Weakness or sensory change, again, potentially circulation to the brain. Likewise, likewise. Unexplained abdominal pain. Well, OK, not quite sure the link there, but uh, new, new leg pain or swelling. That would be uh, at the onset of what we call heart failure, where the blood is not getting back uh, to the heart. So it, uh, it pulls in the lower parts of the body and that can cause swelling. So um, quite an important list there. Of course, I'm going to paste, the, uh, paste them all. So let, 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 let's, let's ignore what I said and go with the Heart Association ones. Chest pain, including sharp sudden pain, stabbing pains, difficulty breathing, abnormal heartbeat, including a, a abnormal fast heart rate and all those other things there that were mentioned. Or, of course, if you feel anything is wrong, you know, to talk to your doctor for goodness sake. So three implications there. Um, now, it seems to me that if this vaccine is injected into the muscle, then um, it's going to go into the, the muscle cells and can cause some inflammation in the muscle cells. And th that, I think that's the main thing that causes the pain in the arm, if it's even into a muscle. 
But if very occasionally it's given into a vessel in mistake, that a blood vessel in mistake, then it can circulate around the body and could potentially go into any cells of the body. So my question is, could that be happening? Could this be rare cases of inadvertent uh, vascular administration overlapping with other risk factors like being a young man, like, other, like, 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 well, like being young and being male? Um, could it potentially be overlapping and that the, the, uh, the RNA particles get into other cells? Um, these other cells produce the antigens and that causes an inflammatory reaction in those cells. I don't think that's ludicrous and this has not been answered yet. Now this is this is this is from my GP here. My uh, my GP is pretty not GP <laughs> MP, <laughs> my member of Parliament, my, the, my political activism here. Um, so, uh, dear John, thank you for contacting me about your concerns regarding administration techniques of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine related to blood clots. But I would include in that the uh, the other vaccines as well, because you remember this idea where vaccinators are taught not to aspirate before they inject that that's my question i want that question to be answered so my mp my member of parliament has written to the right honorable matt hancock secretary of state for health social care at the department of health and social care on your behalf asking him to look into this issue i will be in further contact with you <coughs> when i receive a response in other words with a diddly squat uh, and i know quite a few of you have written the same thing as well so are some of these complications caused by inadvertent vasc in vascular administration well they thought so in denmark with the oxford astrazeneca vaccine but we haven't had a we haven't had an answer yet so that that's the first point i would like that answered an official answer if the answer is look john campbell suggested that inadvertent uh, intravascular administration might be a problem this is ludicrous completely ignore it and forget it so be it but 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 th this should be answered the question is a good one, and I know a lot of you agree with me. Uh, should young men be, Oxford, be offered the Oxford AstraZeneca or the Janssen vaccine instead of the Pfizer vaccine is another question I would like that to be answered. And uh, why on earth are we not advising people not to exercise for a few days after the vaccine, like go for a major workout or go and play a sport or something like that? Why is that not part of the guideline? So I would like those three questions answered. I don't expect they will be, but there you go. But in the meantime, any of these, any of these uh, conditions, any of these symptoms after vaccine, um, don't shrug them off. Don't say, oh, I'll just go for a jog and it'll clear. Seek medical advice, please. Because that could turn something which was a transient inconvenience and would have gone away and you would have lived a happy life after that to something which could be potentially, potentially uh, unfortunate. OK, so um, as soon as I get an answer from my uh, member of parliament, I will let you know. But it's been some time now and I still haven't heard anything. So, OK, I think that's us for today. Interesting questions. Uh, let's hope we get some answers. In the meantime, of course, everyone's supporting the vaccination programme, don't they? You know, I, I, all these... I mean, remember, remember that these people know what they're talking about. We remain confident that the benefits of vaccination far exceed the very small rare risks. So direct quote from these guys. And these are the national experts in the United States. And of course, our experts in the UK are saying the same thing.